Now we're going to briefly review different graphing procedures used in statistical analysis. Graphing, generally speaking, is a procedure for simplifying data and improving or increasing our understanding of the data set. Graphing is often necessary because large sets of numbers are very hard to comprehend without performing some kind of visual analysis on them. When we are, when we are trying to create a new graph, we can use some questions to help us select which graph we are going to draw. First of all, we want to know what is the goal of our graph. Is the goal to simply illustrate how a variable is distributed? Is the goal to see if two variables are related to one another? Is the goal to see how some kind of uh, variable is composed into by, the, by the different groups of that variable? Or are we trying to perhaps compare two variables over time, or one variable with itself over time? Another thing to, to try to think about is how many variables are we using in our graph? Are we just doing a univariate graph? Univariate meaning we only have one variable. Do we have a bivariate graph, trivariate, or multivariate graph? Another thing to consider is the level of measurement of each variable that we're trying to graph. Ratio measured variables are amenable to many different types of graphs, but ordinal or, inter or nominal data really uh, limit which graphs we are able to use. This figure helps us choose which graph we should, be, we should use to illustrate our data. It starts in the center of the figure with the question of what we would like to show. Comparison, relationship, composition, or distribution. From there, we can follow the tree out and answer questions regarding the nature of the variables, the number of variables, whether or not the variables are static, or if they change over time. Uh, different branches of this tree have different questions that, w that, that need to be answered before we can select the appropriate graph to use. Most of these figures can be made in Excel or in SPSS, or else they can be made in, in other off-the-shelf statistical software packages. In our case, we are just going to go over some of the very basic graphs, and a lot of you have seen these in, in, in your previous courses. The first one is called a histogram. In a histogram, we are illustrating the frequencies of different data values using vertical bars. And we are going to order the vertical bars from left to right according to the data values themselves. So on the y-axis, we've got frequency, or the number of times a data value occurs. And across the x-axis, we've got the data values themselves or the values that the data values can be. So here, what this graph is telling us is that there are five observations that have a value between a zero, 0 and 100. There are about 32 observations with a value between 100 and 200. There are roughly 43 observations between 2 and 300. There are about 16 observations between 300 and 400. And then there are about four observations between 400 and 500. This is a really simple thing to do in, in, in SPSS, the software package that you're going to be using. Uh, we have options. We don't have to illustrate a histogram using a bar chart like this, using these bars. We can instead draw a line polygon around the histogram that essentially tells us the exact same information. Let's try to build a histogram by ourselves. Imagine a data set where the data values can take on the uh, values between 0 and 5. These are the x values, the values of our variable. And now we're going to have another column here. That's the frequency. Say there were three zeros, six ones, ten twos, nine threes, five fours, and two fives. So we can draw our bars here. Zero, one, two, three, four. 
five. So we can start with, uh, let's start with the biggest value, two equals ten. And we'll say that each bar on this graph paper equals a frequency of two. So two, four, six, eight, ten. So our first bar is going to be over here. Now we can draw the three, the six. We have nine threes. We have five fours. And we have two fives. So here we've got our value of x, and here we've got our frequencies. And that's an example of a histogram.